The reaction to Israel's judicial overhaul has for months been loud and at times chaotic. But that did not stop the country's right-wing government from approving the first phase of the plan on Monday. The law limits the Supreme Court's ability to overturn government decisions. Further actions could include giving Parliament the power to overturn Supreme Court decisions by a simple majority and giving lawmakers the final say on appointing judges. Since Monday's vote, the public response has only intensified. Thousands of doctors walked off the job and the, the very next day in protest and military reservists have threatened to stop reporting for duty. Let's bring in Stephen Zipperstein. He is a Koshland professor in Jewish culture and history at Stanford University. Professor, help us understand why doctors and soldiers would go on strike over this law and what that says about the weight of this particular moment. Well, it's weighing very heavily. Um, it's primarily a lack of trust. It's not merely about what the government has currently done, disturbing as it is, but what the government could well do. I mean, for example, the Minister of Health and Interior, the current Minister of Health and Interior was chosen only after Arya Derry, the founder of the Shas Party, was it was it was decided by the Supreme Court that he couldn't be seated because he had already been 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 accused of of, of bribery. Um, and um, and it was only the Supreme Court that stopped that appointment. Now, with uh, this this change, and with the Knesset of uh, the leading party in the Knesset unleashed, it could do whatever it wants. So in many ways, it's protest against what already has occurred, but it it signals lack of faith in the future. So it's a protest of a, kind of an imagination as well. I mean, imagining what could happen is is there a particular a portion of the population or set of ideas that is at stake or that is in peril um, if this goes forward, or is it just generalized? It, it, it doesn't take a massive amount of imagination to, um, to, um, to, to figure out what might happen. In many ways, figures comparable to Marjorie um, Green are now um, in ministerial seats, and figures who had been utterly marginalized um, in the past and and so the, um, the the fear is is very real that there's absolutely no check on the government and as as distrusted as Netanyahu is uh, he's gone through five five elections in as many years um, um, and an inability to form a form a, a majority coalition um, until this one it, it, Netanyahu is perceived as being essentially the lap lapdog. Of, of the extreme right. So finally, pr Professor, the Biden administration has criticized both uh, the, this approach uh, and, the, and the, the Israeli settlements in the West Bank. So how, what, what's your sense of the state of relations um, given this vote and what may happen uh, to come? There's short-term and long-term implications as I see it, especially if Biden continues to be president. The, the Democratic party can't challenge Israel, certainly in an electoral cycle, even though the vast majority of Jews, or precisely because the vast majority of Jews, vote Democrat, but feel um, sympathetic to Israel in one way or another. In the short term, I think relatively little will happen. In the long term, a great deal might change. Um, Israel is of great strategic importance to, to, to um, the United States and of considerable electoral importance to both parties. And um, I imagine the Democratic Party will not distance itself much in the foreseeable future. In, in the long term, I think this could have a major impact. The, the emergence of an Israel that politically is closer to Turkey or Hungary um, than it is to, um, to, to what, what people imagine Israel should be. Stanford Professor Stephen Zipperstein, thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure.